Hello and welcome to this uh, Friday, Omega 365. And today we are going to have a look at our status report module. Yes, and a status reporting module. I think we've had it with us since more or less PIMS R1. Uh, it has, of course, developed quite since that time. We initially started with a PDF-based approach. We had a PDF file uh, using our report designer and then in that incorporated various data from our other modules. And it has developed a lot, of course, and uh, the last uh, versions of our solutions, we've used a Word-based template. And that's what we're going to talk a little bit about today, how this is uh, uh, done in Omega 365. We're going to dive a little bit behind the scene, how we make these small apps, for example, that you want to have as part of, our, uh, of, as part of the status report. Yes. Good. And uh, you are showing us some... Uh, Cool yeah. stuff. Yes. <laughs> well, um, so I have st status reports here. So I have a prepared one status report. On the right hand side, you will see uh, uh, the preview of it here. Mm -hmm. Of course, if I want to make a new status report, I can do that from here. I say which org unit it belongs to, how often it's to be produced, who's responsible for it, the cutoff date for it, etc. And also input. Uh, due date and time. So when we're collecting input from all the different contributors, because in a project or whatever, we're going to have this status report, it's typically based on having inputs from various people in the project, project yeah. uh, the cost controller, the risk manager, the project manager, good old traditional text inputs saying something about how it's all going. And uh, that will, of course, then appear on their uh, front page, so they know that they have an action to prepare their input. Hmm. And there's a templating uh, part of the... Yes, that's important. So here, uh, when I create a status report, I have to say, what is the template for this? And the template, is uh, said initially, it's a Word-based, or it's a Word document where we have some tags indicating that here we're going to put in some, uh, some content from Omega 365. Okay, so... Let's have a little look at the one that we've prepared. So I click on this report, and here I will see the text contribution sections, having all the different uh, parts where we can have some inputs and who is uh, who this has been assigned to, and if they uh, completed the input. Uh, on the right-hand side here, you can see that the input is coming in in the shape of uh, HTML. Formatted text, the standard stuff that we have uh, throughout uh, Omega 365 with uh, uh, different styling options. Yeah. Um, and then I could also have other content. Yeah, before going to that, you will see here tag for use in templates. So in that Word document, it's documented how I need to put that in. So in the Word document template, I will see this tag for to make sure that this gets into the document. And here is where you combine content from the editor, so yeah. you can write here, yes. and then, then also connect it to the word. Yes. And here we have other content, so that could be uh, web apps, small web apps that you prepare. It could be charts, like here in this case, we have a little cost uh, summary report with the key numbers uh, according to the WS structure. We have a little chart there showing issues last 10 weeks and another small report showing some key information from the scheduling and progress status world. And these uh, web apps, um, those are the sa same widgets which we can build the dashboards. Yes, uh, that's where cool. you So all these widgets are reusable yes. throughout our solution. Yes. Meetings, you can connect them to an agenda item, status reports, um, and then the dashboards. Yeah, that's the really one of the beauties about this concept. Yeah. Um, before we, we're going to dig into one of these apps in a few minutes, but before we get to that point, just showing a little bit more. So we have attachments. You can also include that sometimes. That could be, in this case, it's a PDF view of the schedule. Of course, the schedule is uh, prepared in Omega 365 using our scheduling tool, yeah. uh, printed in or exported PDF, and then I just attach it here. In some cases, it might be some external sources that uh, you want to include that, a PDF from an external source that you want to include in your uh, status report. Mm. So that's also possible, just uploading the PDF then. And then you can say something you're going to send this to. Mm -hmm. Here you can view the template, and here you can view the final report. We'll get back to that. And of course, 
other good things that we have available in Omega 365 is that it's quite easy to edit mm. with this uh, Office 365 integration. So if I need to edit this template, I just click here and it will open up in our world. And this Outline. was the, the, uh, the template itself. Yes. So you have a template here. You can set up the template and then you can also edit the report. Same methods. Yeah, yep. in case you want to kind of uh, style it after it's been generated and uh, you have replaced these tags with the real uh, data from the solution, you can always go back in and do some additional designing or add some more stuff. Yep. But here you can edit the template and here you will yeah, s see these tags that are uh, put into it. Okay, so uh, I'm done with that one. And uh, finally then, when you uh, are ready, you have got your text contributions and the data is all right, ready to uh, get out. I just say merge templates and elements into a report and then it generates a PDF or a Word document actually, mm -hmm. but also convert it to PDF with the content. So here, if I switch to this view now, you will see that we have uh, got a table of content, of course, generated automatically. We have the status and here something Obviously, in this case, it's uh, the one that prepared the template uh, or the one that uh, defined the part here were not fully aligned. So yep. if it's not finding a match, it won't work. Yep. But in this part, you can see it worked well. And we have the progress status. This is actually spit out from our web app. Mm -hmm. And uh, scrolling down, the same thing here with the cost status part. Uh, and then the various areas that I put in some stuff from. Yep. So. Of course, this is just a dummy sample, but here it could be some really nice project report that you prepare for this purpose. And the whole kind of mm, the re really good thing here is that connecting to the real data yes. you already have in the solution. Like this one, uh, if you recognize in the report, you would see that this activity status was uh, included yeah. and you saw that this WS uh, this cost status based on WS was also produced. And let's have a little look at this. Here you have the URL, the web app, is status cost summary. So I just go to the article list together with all the other web apps. And here I have this one. And let's have a little look into how this web app is created. As you can see, we're using Razor in this case. Mm. Uh, we want to have it really, f <laughs> we don't need, of course, interactivity on this because it's going to end up in a Word document or some other places where you put it fi finished in yep. a way. Yep. Uh, so, and uh, that also, if we have a little more look at the settings, you can see that the template I used here is AF simple. Yep. So no complex styling stuff at all. I can actually see through the published versions, it's uh, John Evick. It's oh one yeah. of the developers. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah. This was, uh, as you can see also, it's not very complex, so even I managed to get this uh, done yeah. with some help. Uh, and you can see here that, for example, we use fixed pixels. We know in this case, we know this one's going to be used on a A4 portrait type of report. So I have the, yeah, choose the approach that I want to fix the size so it looks nice on that report. Mm. Uh, but then using a uh, standard uh, ratio approach with the looping through the data that I received from the stored procedure. And really you put uh, uh, the logic in a way, as you saw, the WS was kind of having some indenting and stuff. You can put, uh, and it was hierarchic, mm -hmm. uh, you put some of the logic inside the stored procedure. So it comes with the data prepared for yep. you, so you don't do any complex uh, relations between data sources and stuff. I have a sort of procedure which has all the data and I just need to get them out uh, in a nicely structured web app. So very simple. I think this is it. I don't have any scripts. I would expect nothing, no, and uh, CSS, nothing. So this was actually it. So yes, I was uh, <laughs> able to do this myself. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Basically, this is then the app um, that you have, you develop, you use it in the status reports, um, dashboards, yeah. meeting agendas, whatever you want, or just directly in the browser yeah. as well. And, um, and it will give you the data at the point you uh, produce it, 
or you could also provide the parameters in. Yeah, if, yeah. If that would be. That gives you the freedom. Yeah. So, uh, yes, and that was really the key thing here that uh, to all of our developers, you know that this is things that you can do to make the status report really uh, good. Yeah. <laughs> putting in, retrieving data directly from Omega365 and presenting them in a nicely formatted report. And perhaps that Word document is somebody in the design department in that company that you wants to have this report, they can prepare these templates. Yes. The only thing, uh, or the big thing that we have to do as developers is to make sure that we have these apps ready, that we connect the template uh, through the data by having these uh, tags mm -hmm. and making sure that this is all set up correctly. And uh, then you get the usability f from the those that are going to put in data, they get it on the front page and you need to provide this and that uh, yeah. input before this and that date. Yes. Perfect. Um, yeah, and again, the text contribution, you assign them to persons, they yeah. show up on your home page th yeah. that you have an action, there's a yeah. due date. Yes. Uh, set on the whole report. The yeah, you can even actually uh, hide actions if you want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And then when the report is produced, uh, save, you can send them. Yep. Uh, and then next month, you create a new one. Yeah, yes, that's important. So you store the report as is with the data as it was at that time generated. So you have the Word document yes. as it looked like the, the PDF history. version. Yep. Perfect. Good. That was it for uh, this Friday. Yes. We are back another Friday. Yes. See you then. Bye. Bye-bye.